everyone. In this viewer request tutorial, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to create text along a curve in Affinity Designer for iPad. Now I'm using version two of the app. However, the same process applies for version one, though your interface will look different. For those of you on the desktop, you can easily follow along as well, so long as you know where the tools are located. So let's get started. In this first example, I'm going to start with a single line of text so that we can take a look at the basics of text along a path. In the next example, we'll get a little more complex and work with two paths along a circular shape. So I've created this ribbon and I want my line of text to follow the same curve upward on this second one. So the first thing I want to do is create my path. I'm going to use my pen tool to do that. So I'll start here on the bottom left side of the top of the ribbon. I'm going to click and drag up and I'm gonna hold my finger down to keep my handles straight. That's going to help guide the next node. I'll lift up and go over to the top right and do the same thing. Now, if you don't get it exactly where you want it to begin with, don't worry about it. This is a curve, so you can grab your node tool and make adjustments. So I'm gonna drag this one here and maybe adjust the depth of that curve a little bit. And I'll move this one here and pull this handle up. And then I wanna move the whole thing down. So I'm gonna hold my finger down to get it to the bottom of the ribbon. Now the color and the weight of the stroke don't matter because as soon as I turn this into a text path, it's going to disappear. And that is something to keep in mind. If you want the path that you're adding your text to to remain visible, you're going to need to make sure that you duplicate it before changing one of the duplicates to a text path. Now in my case, that doesn't matter. So with it selected, I'm just going to select my artistic text tool and I want to tap on the line. That's going to give me a cursor as well as these two handles, one green and one red. These are the start and end handles that are either going to increase or decrease the area where your text will flow along the path. Let me type out a word. So I'm gonna type out congratulations. And I'm going to minimize my keyboard. The reason I do that is because for some reason, text on a path and the full size keyboard wreak havoc with one another on the in interface and the canvas tends to move around a bit. I find that by pinching that to minimize it, and not only solves for that, but it gives me more room to work. So let's head back to these handles. The green one is going to lead the front of the word and the red is going to lead the back of them. If your text goes past either of those points, it's automatically going to pop to the other side of the line upside down. And in the next exercise, I'll show you how you can avoid it flipping upside down if you know some of your text is going to go to the second line. So I'll pull this back. You can continue to move your handles here back and forth until you space your lettering exactly where you want. But something additional that you can do is change your font size as well as your text. Now my font and size were already set before I created this one. But if you want to change it after the fact, you'll just select your letters. I'm gonna go ahead and double tap until everything is selected. And I can either go up here to the top in the contextual menu, I'm going to go right to my text studio where I can change my font. I can change the size up and down. And one additional thing that I want to change for this line is to change the tracking. So one thing you'll notice is that some of my letters are far apart where others are closer. So I'm going to go to this first line just under where you can change the size of your font. I'm gonna click this arrow. This is your character settings. And under positioning, I want to change tracking. I can change tracking of the entire word by selecting the whole thing and just dragging in. And I always start with that a little bit just to bring all of it in. Then I take a look at the individual letters. So for example, this N and G are really far apart. So I'm going to click and drag to select both of those. And when I drag tracking in, you're gonna notice that the right side of the selection is what moves while the other one stays where it is. Now that also causes all the others to move. So what you might find is that you have to go through and adjust some things. So I pull that G closer, pull it a little bit closer, but now that R is a little too close to the G. So I'm going to select both of those and I'll move those out a little bit. And I can follow that all the way across the word until all of my letters look the way that I want them to. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up and finish the rest of the word. Okay, so I could keep playing around with that, but I think this looks good. I might just change the font size a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the 
first screen here. I'll select all of my letters and I'm just going to drag this up a bit. I want to make sure I don't go past that red mark because you'll see it pops to the other side. I could also pull the green down a little bit and keep going if I want to make it a little bit bigger. Now when your text path is selected, either with the move tool or the artistic text tool, you'll notice these two dots down here at the bottom. The inner node is going to impact the flow of your text. In other words, it's going to shift the path and therefore shift how your text flows along the line. So let me just drag this and you can see what I mean. This isn't necessarily what I want because I actually like the flow of my text. What I want to do is actually change the overall size and that's where the outer node is going to help. You can drag this outer node and it's going to change not only the path, but it's going to change the size of the text. And if you hold two fingers down on the screen, you can maintain the aspect ratio. So I'm just going to drag this up a little bit and I'll use my move tool to move it exactly where I want it. Now that we've taken a look at a single line of text, let's take a look at two lines of text on a circular path. For the second exercise, we're going to focus on creating two lines of text along a circular path. What we cover here can apply to any shape though, whether it's a circle or even a single line. So I have this floral illustration with a quote by Monet and I want to recreate it on this artboard. You're going to notice that the two lines of text are the same orientation. They're both upright. And I'm going to show you how you can purposely create your text so that happens. I'm going to begin by creating the circle around my flower that's going to become my path. So I'll grab my ellipse tool and I'm going to make sure that snapping is on for this. I want to start in the middle with three fingers down on the canvas. I'm going to start to click and drag out and holding my three fingers down is going to allow me to create a perfect circle from the center of my flower. Now the size doesn't matter too much because again, I can adjust this. I just want enough room to start to work. Now again, the stroke width and the color don't matter because this is going to disappear as soon as I turn it to a text path. But if you do need this shape to remain visible, make sure you duplicate it before changing it to a text path. I'm going to select my artistic text tool and just tap on the line. I want to start with the line at the top of the circle. I'm just gonna make this bigger just for now since this is a longer line to type out. And I'll start with, I must have flowers. Now I know that I want always and always to be on the other side of my flower upright. So instead of continuing to type, which is going to eventually cause it to go past the red handle over here, I'm going to hit return and that's going to bring my cursor to the other side of the circle. And I'll just type out always and always. Now two things are going to happen. You're going to see this text show up on this side, but you're also going to see additional handles show up. So each line of text is going to have its own green and its own red handle, and they're going to be opposite of your text. So I'm going to move this one up and I'll move this one down. Now, one thing I don't like is that the always and always is on the inside of the circle. So what I want to do is adjust its baseline so that it's on the outside of the circle, the way this top line is. I'll click to select the entire word and go back to my text studio and under character settings where we found tracking, you'll see baseline. I can click and drag this to bring that out until it's outside of the circle. And then what that might do is cause some issues with my tracking. So I might need to adjust some of those. I feel like this L and W are too close together. So I'm just going to move those out and then I'll adjust these two. Oops, make sure you don't adjust the baseline. And then I'll just go through the entire word and make sure that I make any changes all the way across. Now that I've adjusted my baseline, I just wanna step back and take a look and see if I want to adjust the overall path itself. Remember, I have these two handles down here. Now I don't wanna adjust the flow of it. I'm not going to move that inner one. I might try and change the size of the circle though. And I'm going to hold two fingers down on the canvas. That's going to lock my aspect ratio. And I'll just move that in. I could also change the size of the font a little bit. I think I'm going to move this back, select my shape and maybe move this up to, I think 86. And I'll do the same thing with that one down here. And that's it. Two ways to add text to a path, whether it's a single line or a shape like an ellipse. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below and be sure to let me know if you have a suggestion for a tutorial you'd like to see here on my channel. 
If you like my teaching style, I recommend checking out my full length classes on either Skillshare or my own learning site, The Creator Clutch. I've linked both below. I have lots more tutorials coming to YouTube as well, so be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.